Hello community, let's have fun today, mixture of expert system, here we go. Imagine you would have 8 different Mistral 7B LLMs and you want to combine them to a mixture of experts. How would you do this? Now, we know that here our mixture of expert model built upon the observation that LLMs can be decomposed into smaller specialized expert system that only focus here on distinct aspects of the input data. So it is sensitive to the input data, which enables a more efficient computation and a research allocation, especially if we do parallel GPU computing. So AI models now with a mixture of expert system can significantly reduce the computational cost of our large language model. But please notice that the mixture of expert system goes with sparsely activated. A lot of people only talk about mixture of expert, but it is sparsely activated mixture of expert, and I will explain this in a second. Yes. You all know this. At the very beginning of 2017, they emerged. We had here a publication by Google Brain, the sparsely gated mixture of experts layer for outrageously large neural network. And you know there is a rumor that even GPT-4 maybe is a mixture of expert layer. Now for Mistral, we have some torrent information that they are exploring here, the mixture of expert performance of multiple Mistral 7B models. So it all started in 2017. And here you have it, the very beginning. You have a mixture of expert layer here in blue embedded within a recurrent language model. So what we have, we have an input, a token comes in, and then we have a intelligence. And this intelligence is the gating network, and it decides to which expert system send this token off to. Maybe only to one expert, or maybe to two expert system. This was the very beginning in 2017. So if we look now here at the original publication of our sparsely gated mixture of expert layer, we scroll down and you see here, this is the very simple beginning of MOA layers. And then we, of course, we are interested to compute this. So here we go. Yes, you can read this. It's beautiful, but you know this. What is now really interesting is here the intelligence of the gating network, the switching of input tokens to specific expert system. And we go here with the 27 literature, as I told you, the simplest way is the softmax gating function. You have a simple choice of non-sparse gating function. This was 1994, my good, in the old millennium. You multiply the input by a trainable weight matrix, and you have a loss function in the training, and you have the softmax function, and then you just optimize the complete system. This is it. Remember, softmax sums up to one, no negative. You know this. Then you have a noisy top K gating. <laughs> we add two components to the softmax gating network, sparsity and noise. So before taking here the softmax function, we add a tunable Gaussian noise and keep only the top K value, setting the rest to, for example, minus infinity. Forms of sparsity create sometimes theoretically. This continues in the output of gating function. There's no, proc no problem in practice, helps with load balancing. Beautiful. This is the way. And then we have here, even in the 2070 version, we have to train here the gating network to perform its task of assigning the tokens to specific experts. They say hey, we train the gating network by simple backpropagation along with the rest of the model. If we choose here k greater than one, so two expert system, the gate values for the top k expert have non-zero derivative with respect to the weights of the gating network, this type of occasionally sensitive behavior is already described in 2013 with respect to the noisy rectifiers. The gradients also backpropagate through the gating network to its input. We integrate here, of course, our gating network. This is it. Then you have here some problem. Data parallelism, model parallelism. Yeah, we want here the mixture of expert system to have here the perfect parallelism structure for multiple GPU nodes, of course, but
but then you see network bandwidth balancing here to utilization this is more or less it from 2017 previous state of the art and they are mildly matched and consisted still in 2017 we had nothing of, of a gpt system they still had two stacked lstm layers and my youngest viewer will have no idea what it is but never mind we just look here for the mixture of expert functionality. Now we go to Megablocks. We jump here to 2022, just about, yeah, November, a year ago, we had here Megablocks, efficient sparse training within the mixture of expert system. And it is rather easy. What they did here, they addressed here the limitation of the classical MOE system, and they reformulated here their computation in terms of block sparse mathematical operation and developed here the infrastructure computes or new block sparse GPU kernels for the optimization of the matrix multiplication of block sparse matrix structures or tensor structures. This is all there is to it. That's it. If you want to have here an overview of mega blocks, you have here incoming tokens. Now, instead of this uh, gate that we have here, the intelligence, now they call it router. They have now probability assigned to it. And then you have the permutation, the computation, and it's done. Great. Let me focus on the router because I think the router is really a crucial element. In our mixture of X, but the router is implemented as also as a trainable neural network. And the router determines how to distribute singular tokens to various experts based on the current state of the input data and of the expertise of each expert system. So what we do, we start with a token representation. Now each token, a piece of data or a segment of a sentence or whatever you have is, you notice, represented as a high dimensional vector, normally 768 dimensional or 1024 dimension. Here, importance of your tokenizer. Do not underestimate a bad tokenizer can crush your model, even if you do anything else right. Tokenizer and token structure are important for this. Great. Token vector representation, this vector encapsulate the features of the token may include semantic meaning, the context you notice from our transformer structure. And then the token, the router takes now the token's vector representation as an input and now calculates a set of scores. One score for each of the available experts. And these scores represent the router's assessment of how relevant each expert is for processing that specific special token. And this process involves a learned affine transformation followed by a very simple soft max operation. And you know why? Because the scores are non negative and they sum up to one. So we exactly see here the maximum or the top two max allocations. Great. Or after scoring, the router selects the top K expert system with the highest score for each token. K is a small number, sometimes one. But you can go here for at least k equal 2, which would send each token to the two most relevant expert system. Beautiful. Now, I already received question about this. <laughs> okay. Yes, you have to train the router. So the router is trained jointly with the rest of the mixture of expert model here. And it simply learns, like a neural network, the optimal scoring and the distribution strategy based on the feedback from the overall model performance. So what it does? The training process adjusts the router's parameter to minimize the loss function of the entire model. As you know from training any neural network, the, op the loss function, the same happens here. So, which includes measuring how well the combined effort of all experts perform on a given task. So this is quite time intensive, so watch out to have the perfect training data sets for this. You train the router, you train the complete system, and you achieve here the mixture of expert benefit. Now, you know that in computing now this mixture of expert efficiently, we have two problems. We have the problem of how to dynamically route these things, 
and we have a load imbalance computation. Now, to address here these problems here, the authors here of the Megablocks developed an approach for routing and computation based on sparse primitives. I will give you an example what this means in a minute because this is important. Sparse primitives is the building block here. So, to say our approach never drops tokens, this is beautiful, and maps efficiently to modern GPUs, enabling a speed up of up to 40%. Beautiful. So, mega blocks accelerate here the process 40%. Now, they showed that the compute here in a mixture of expert layer can be expressed as a block sparse operation to accommodate imbalance assignment of token to experts and they use this formulation to train here and they call it now a dropless a no token drop a dropless mixture of expert system and if you see this little d it's not for differentiation it is for dropless beautiful and then, of course, if they have now the block sparse matrix multiplication operations, they develop now, of course, the hardware compute side. They optimize the GPU kernels here for specifically the block sparse matrix operation. And you know, there are different methodologies in mathematics how to optimally compute the product of one or two matrices. And if you have a block sparse matrix, there's also there are multiple ways to optimize the mathematical operation here in calculating this in the GPU kernel. Beautiful. That's all you need to know. So here we go. First summary. We enhance the number of model parameters of our LLM without a corresponding rise in the computational expense. We have our expert system and only the input data that are specific to an expert go to this single or maybe k equal to two expert system. Great. Now, I was asked here a simple explanation. Yes, Ben, this is for you. Now, how can you imagine this in very simple terms? Imagine you have a large group of students in the classroom and every student has a question as it is normally. But in the corner, you see here our teachers and each teacher is specialized in a particular subject. And they are, I don't know, 50 students and only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teachers. Now, if all students rush to the teacher, you have a bottleneck. So how we do this? Easy. The idea is to send each student to the teacher that is best suited to answer their question. But, of course, each teacher can only attend a certain number of students at a time. Now, imagine this is a science class. And this here is our professor of mathematics. And the rest of the teacher only, I don't know, baseball or basketball or something else. So all the people want to go to the mathematics teacher. Nobody's interested in baseball. So you see, we have an extreme bottleneck. So how do we cope with this? And this is exactly how the, our experts here, how we have here the mixture of experts that all questions from here, the students are answered. Yes, yes, yes. The example of, of course, if too many students go to only one teacher, some students won't get the answer. This is what we call a token dropping in the mixture of expert system. But we also want to ensure that all students get help, all, aren't, all questions are answered. So you might have to limit the number of students each teacher can see. But this also means that some other teachers will be idle. All the basketball and volleyball teachers are idle while well, here our mathematic professor is above 100 percent capacity so we waste computational resources so we generate a second mathematical teacher to have here to reduce here the bottleneck function great now what does megablock do megablock solve this by efficiently organizing which student goes to which teacher yes 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 and it does this by dynamically adjusting the flow of students and we do this here in mathematics with a block sparse method. Now, if you don't know what a block sparse is, I will show you in the next slide, but akin to creating flexible group sizes that can change as needed. So we ensure that an efficient and balanced distribution of students to teacher is happening. So what Megablock does in this example, it reformulates here a complete mixture of expert computation 
using now this block sparse matrix operation. Notice that it's not only a sparse matrix operation, but a block sparse, and I will show you this. This allows for the handling of imbalance assignment of tokens to expert without the need to drop any token. So we have, we achieve our goal, no token is dropped. Megablock does this with a dynamic routing. Yes, of course. And of course we adopt this here to our GPU corner. So we have the optimal parallelization happening. So in the best case, each teacher here is a GPU and we have parallel, 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 parallel GPU computation. Right. So we are fast and efficient. What is a sparse matrix? Wikipedia. If you have almost only zeros in this matrix, you have a sparse matrix. So here, only non, nine non-zero elements, 26 zero elements. This is a sparse matrix. You can calculate the sparsity and the density of it. Beautiful. In mathematics, you know, we have sparse input, dense, Sparse output, dense input, and dense output, and sparse dense input. A lot of different possibilities. But what we do here is with a block sparse formulation, we achieve that no token is left behind. So what we do, we apply now this block sparse computation for each mixture of expert layer to avoid here that any token is dropped. Yes, yes, less. We can do this. Yes, computation is zero. Yeah, if you go from a mathematics side, you know, sparse matrix is where a large matrix where almost everything is with zero. This is a sparse matrix. A block sparse structure is now a block sparse matrix is a special type of a sparse matrix where non-zero elements are clustered into blocks. And this structure of a block is now more efficient than a fully sparse matrix when we calculate matrix multiplication for example so give you an example you are here in your school and you have four blocks and a block is here a, a playing field for example and here they play soccer and here they play something else and maybe they play volleyball and they play whatever so you build your sparse blocks here and the blocks here focus here on one particular semantic topic let's call it in this way or execute here only one game. So you group them together. And if you think now as this as a matrix, you see this is beautiful because now you have clustered everything together that belongs together. And now our matrix multiplication will become very fast, very efficient if we also optimize the GPU kernels for this particular matrix multiplication. That's it. Yeah. Then, if you read this here, sports tournament with many teams, yes, 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 and you see exactly what I mean. Okay. Not just sport, you have a science club, you have the art club, you have the chess club. You see what's happening. We are building blocks for specific tasks. Mega blocks approach here is exactly this. Yes, block sparse matrices. Yes, matrix multiplication. You know this. Or another example. The size can vary of these blocks. Think about it. You have in a school and you have now the science club, the art club, and the chess club. But different amount of people would like to go to the art club and the chess club. So, in a traditional setup, here in a non-block sparse approach, each club would meet in a large hall and occupy here three equally sized hallways or, or rooms. If we use here the mega block approach, we adjust the rooms. So if we have less students, we take a smaller room, a smaller block, and have a lot of students, we take a bigger block. So our matrix multiplication, you see, is becoming even more efficient, and it is dynamically adjusted here also to the input data. Beautiful. This is all we want. You might say, okay, this was 2022. What about here, the advancement in 2023? Well, you know it. Yes, we have a mixture of expert system here with instruction tuning. And here you have Google, University of Berkeley, MIT, Amherst, and University of Texas. And they have here July 2023 
instruction tuning of mixture of expert systems. So now we are in the fine tuning and you know instruction tuning is a very special fine tuning with we have an instruction data set where we have the instruction and a tuple with an output defined we have here we define here for the model how we want that the model responds to instruction given and with this training data set we can train now our mixture of expert system yes 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 emphasize the necessity of an instruction tuning stage for a mixture of expert models to support the performance of dense models you know, dense model is where we do not have sparse matrix calculation. On downstream task or held out task, now you know switch transformer, I have a video on switch transformer, so similar to the switch transformer architecture, the authors replace here the feed forward component of every other transformer layer with a mixture of expert layer. This mixture of expert layer consists of a collection of independent feed forward and expert that are now our experts. And then, like in 2017, you have now a, let's call it, intelligence gating functionality that uses here softmax activation function to model a probability distribution over the export so you know exactly now to which export to send your specific token. Each MOE layer is a learnable gating network is trained to use it, its input to activate the best two export for each token of an input sequence k equal 2 here. You know this. In doing inference, the learned gating network dynamically picks here the best two experts for each token. Great. If you want to learn more about here, there's a multitude of instruction tuning methodologies here for LLMs and for mixture of expert system. I would recommend you have a look at this uh, scientific publication from October 9, 2023. And here you have a beautiful amount of instruction tuning explained all the different data sets and everything that you can use also here to train your mixture of expert system. Beautiful. I hope this was a first touch on MOE systems. What are they? When did they happen? How did they evolve? What methodologies do we have to train them? to fine-tune them for instruction fine-tuning, for example. And I hope this gives you a first idea what are mixture of expert system for the upcoming development in our large language model and in our vision language model. It would be great to see you in my next video.